Don't waste two hours of your time watching the Apple keynote from today's Glow Time event. I'll tell you everything you need to know, at least about the Apple intelligence AI side in about five-ish minutes, all right? I'll tell you the big stuff about the Apple iPhone 16, all that, but we're here to learn about the Apple intelligence, the AI. Is it any good? Let's dive in really quick and find out. If you're brand new here, Thanks for joining. My name is Jordan Wilson. I'm the host of Everyday AI. We're a daily live stream podcast, free daily newsletter, helping us all learn and leverage generative AI. So usually do something called an AI in five. That's what this is. Usually a tip, trick, or tutorial, but sometimes we recap big news. And the big news of today is the new iPhone 16 from Apple, including the uh, 16 Pro and the 16 Pro Max. All right, so uh, the most expensive model uh, clocking in at, uh, geez, about $1,200. So it is not cheap if you want all the new Apple intelligence, but this is the first iPhone lineup where all of the iPhones will work with their new Apple intelligence, which is being rolled out via a software update. Uh, so unless you have the newer uh, 15 Pro or 15 Pro Max, you will not be able to make use of all of the new Apple intelligence features as they start rolling out this fall. However, starting with Apple 16, all of those models uh, in presumably moving forward uh, will work with Apple intelligence. So that's something important to know. And there's other new things that were announced. We're not going to go over that. You know, new watches, it's big, titanium, whatever. Uh, here's the cool thing I like, uh, the, the new uh, AirPods Pro. So again, this a lot of this uses AI, right? Like everything is using AI. But uh, I like that there's a uh, hearing. It's literally just being used as a hearing aid, right? So clinical grade hearing aid, wild, super cool stuff uh, Apple's working on. Uh, and as well as a lot of the new, what you can accomplish with the camera, video, editing, right? Great. Like apparently the weekend shot an entire music video on it, but that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about the Apple intelligence. So, uh, there's actually a lot and we've covered this in depth. So, uh, I'll, I'll try to leave, uh, links to some of the other, uh, videos and podcast episodes that we've covered. Uh, so essentially it's down, it's down to this. There's going to be a small language model uh, on the new Apple iPhone 16. So what that means is it is faster, uh, it is more secure, and in theory, it is cheaper in the long run for all parties involved. So normally when you're using artificial intelligence, you essentially have to talk to a cloud. So those are ongoing costs, right? Every time you essentially send a ping to ChatGPT, you are technically paying for it, uh, the company's paying for it, et cetera. So now they're putting a, a small language model, uh, so it's powerful enough to fit on the phone, and they had to do that with a new you know, Apple A18 Pro sensor, right? All this new technology, new CPU, GPU, all this stuff, right? Uh, so essentially they made the iPhone much more powerful and they made a model uh, that was small enough yet powerful enough to actually fit on your phone. So this is, like I said, uh, kind of this Apple 16 uh, on forward is the uh, kind of most powerful uh, version of the iPhone that can actually have a large language model or a small language model technically living on the device. Uh, pretty cool. So with the Edge AI there from Apple. So here's the three things that I think you need to know and that are pretty, uh, I won't say new, but we got some more details, right? Because a lot of these things were uh, announced or previewed uh, at uh, Apple's June WWDC uh, developer conference. Uh, so nothing here terribly new, although we did get some new details. Uh, so number one, the thing that I think to know is actually it's technically a piece of hardware that interacts with the software. So it's a new camera control button. And here's why I think it's important in the AI piece. It's, well, that's how you control what they're calling the visual intelligence. Uh, so it's interesting here. This is uh, in Apple's entire keynote. This is really the only time that they mentioned two competitors by name, specifically using the visual intelligence to, as an example, launch chat GPT. Uh, so that is another big thing here for all of your requests that are maybe too powerful for the Edge AI or the onboard Apple small language model on your iPhone 16. For everything else, uh, it essentially will prompt you uh, to use ChatGPT instead, or you can trigger it as an example, using this new uh, camera control button to bring up what they're calling visual intelligence. So that is essentially when you combine computer vision with a large language model. So uh, it's funny, Apple here just, you know, essentially said, hey, if you don't know your uh, answer to your homework, use the new iPhone 16. The US educational system is broken, y'all. Uh, and then they also use the example of doing uh, 
Google Shopping, right? So kind of just borrowing things we've already seen from OpenAI and from Google, if I'm being honest, and then putting them into the nice marketing of Apple intelligence. Uh, but I do think that is, uh, at least from a hardware perspective, to bring in uh, kind of the software, uh, the Apple intelligence, I think that's probably going to be one of the most used and most useful uh, features versus right now you have to open your phone, you have to take a photo, you have to launch another app, you know, probably it's probably like a four or five button uh, process to do something similar. So now in theory, uh, just with one button, pretty quick access. Number two is a new and improved Siri. And we did get some uh, new, uh, I guess, details because it looks like this will be free, which that piece is huge. Uh, because before, they didn't really say if all of these new advanced features would require a paid ChatGPT uh, Plus subscription uh, to use the kind of more powerful version of Siri. But it looked like after today's keynote, it didn't look like that would be the case. It looks like this will be free uh, and starting to roll out in beta for US customers next month, uh, So, but in English to start with. So a, a lot to uncover here, we'll go quick. So the biggest things are enhanced natural language processing. So just better, well, hopefully better, right? At uh, understanding uh, conversation, you know, if you make a mistake, uh, you, you know, just, just more nuanced, right? Um, versus, in, you know, in the past, Siri and Alexa, they're really bad. I can't even use them anymore. I'm sure you probably feel the same way. Uh, also with Siri, you can now type to Siri. So yeah, it's kind of like having a smart assistant you can type to. I guess there's reasons you might want to do that. Uh, personalized and contextual responses. Uh, that's probably a big one. Uh, so, you know, it will be able to go through all of the, at least we know right now, all of the Apple apps, you know, pulling information from your text messages, your uh, email. So, you know, there's also privacy concerns there. Uh, do you want Siri uh, kind of knowing all of that and responding to it? For me personally, heck yeah, it's going to save me time. For most people, I'm sure there's things in uh, their, their email and um, text messages, et cetera, that they might not want Siri to have access to. Um, and then you also, so aside from the personalized and contextual responses, obviously all of the, you know, quote unquote, AI driven features, some of them I think are just gimmicky, like, you know, AI powered emojis, uh, don't really care about that. Uh, but some other cool things like being able to talk with your photos, um, or talk to your photos or type in using uh, kind of Siri in this small language model on board to create very personalized, uh, you, you know, memories out of your photos and videos. Uh, so pretty cool example, you know, that was going through videos and saying, you know, Candace doing a flip. So essentially you can create using AI, uh, create a lot of personalized uh, videos and photos based on anything uh, that it can uh, essentially detect. And then last but not least, and I think this will probably be in theory the most used in theory, but also maybe the most boring, nothing crazy exciting about text to text, right? When we talk about uh, generative AI and the future of it, it's all about multi-modalities. Uh, but I think this is going to be one of the most used features is just the writing tools is what they're called and using those uh, throughout Apple apps and uh, eventually third-party integrations. So helping you proofread and update your text, giving you suggestions as you're typing or being able to highlight uh, text that you type in and, you know, asking it to rewrite it in a different tone, make it more professional, uh, more more friendly, etc. Uh, another uh, similarly related is being able to, uh, in the voice notes, being able to transcribe. Uh, so nothing new there, just more new interface because it can technically, Apple can actually already do this in uh, various ways, but a little uh, easier way to trigger this feature. Um, as well as this is one that I would personally be most uh, looking forward to is being able to elevate important reminders and notifications and summarizing them. So with email previews, message previews, uh, notifications, making them actually usable. So these are uh, actually two different screenshots from the video. I screenshotted them, did some comparison comparisons here. So, you know, a lot of times you'll get message previews, uh, on your iPhone and, you know, most of the time it's just nonsense, right? Uh, especially emails, just previewing a bunch of email texts. So this makes it seemingly actually very useful and giving you context right away and also using AI to prioritize, right? So according to maybe what's on your calendar, the time of day, but to, you know, essentially rearrange your notifications according to what is most timely based on the context and the content of those messages. So pretty cool. All right. I hope this was helpful. Like I said, there's plenty of people out there covering all the hardware. You know, we gave you an update, but really just wanted to tell you the big features uh, on Apple intelligence. So like I said, nothing really new here, nothing groundbreaking that we didn't already see from WWDC. Uh, and also, you know, I don't know, it, it looked like at least early on, uh, not, not a lot of, uh, you know, 
hoopla or hype out there around this. Apple's stock, at least so far, has gone down today, whereas after the uh, WWDC in June, it went up pretty significantly. So uh, it's it's early on. The keynote just wrapped up, I don't know, like 30 minutes ago. So we'll see how that goes. I hope this is helpful. If so, please go to youreverydayai.com, sign up for the free daily newsletter, and we'll see you back for another AI in 5. Thanks, y'all.